My name is Naeed Chitza, as part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Have you ever climbed a mountain that you never knew, but you had a map or a guide? I am that map. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your Google Drive. That's what it is. I'm your navigation. Okay. So my name is Nadia Manji. I'm a transformational intuitive life and business coach. And um, I show people how to overcome their vulnerabilities and eternal barrier to lead best lives. Over the last 20 years, I worked and lived in three different continents. And right now I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Why would you want to go to Canada? No comment. I'm not going to come. <laughs> Someone with your talent like that, Canada? No comment. No comment. I mean, I love Canadians, but a little bit more on this border, it's better weather. Way yeah, I know. It's, it's like, but we have you know, less lakes. <laughs> let's say I have come to to the mountain to show people how to climb it to be, feel more warm in their hearts. <laughs> Definitely. So let's dive into it. I know you had a video a couple of weeks ago, or maybe a month ago or so. You were talking about having a productive week. What the heck does that mean? People are trying to have productive hours and days. You said productive week. What does that mean? Well, it goes back to your post today that you put the 2190 rule. That, that's the what's inspired, that when you set goals, you, you go. Because people, you know, the problem with people is about goal setting till goal getting. So people set goals, but getting is the challenge. So I talk about that when you have the direction, then you backstep it, connect the dots, like Steve Jobs says, that you can connect the dot and you send the intention. It's all about powerful energy and emotions. That's my expertise. So I help people create that so they can create balance. They can create alignment. They can overcome the challenges that they're going through right now. So, okay. So my next question becomes is, is it setting goals more important or the action that goes behind the goals? Well, everything is intention, buddy. Everything is intention. When you set an intention, you direct the energy because we all are the energies. So when we decide the direction, light flows in the straight direction, the science. So when you set the intention, you're going to send that message out there and then it connects to the action. So when it first starts with the intention, then planning and then action. And then you get the results out there. So based on your, your, your coaching sessions and dealing with so many individuals, what do you think is the top two uh, the, the challenges? Why are people having so many difficulty getting to the, achieving their goals on time? Well, goal, again, is that, uh, talk about goal getting is all about, it starts with you. It starts with you. First person that you wake up, you see yourself, you interact with yourself. It starts with you. So people have problem with themselves. They don't have problem with the world, that's secondary. The primary problem is you yourself. And you communicate to yourself, you think about yourself in three ways we communicate. I talk is it a you, problem or is it a level of me. understanding? Sorry? Is it a problem or is it a level of understanding? I think it's a challenge. I would call it a challenge. I wouldn't call it a problem. I would call it a challenge because the challenge is that people start with goal setting and goal getting scenario. Every time people hire coaches, they plan, they buy planners, they do everything. And then it comes to the again, think and grow rich book that you uh, really highly promote. And I love that book myself. It's all about mindset. It's all about mindset. And I go into mindset, feel set, soul set and skill set. You have to build yourself to that goal setting. So first challenge is you yourself. When you get up, you wait, you three ways you communicate yourself. It's I talk to you, you talk to me, and I talk to myself. The three ways of communication. So first person that you wake up, your intention is you and the universe. And that's where people miss out, the power of intention. And that's why we are here in the crisis, that when things change, we don't know how to communicate with ourselves. We don't know how to communicate with the world. So again, it comes to crisis part and the balance, that everybody is missing the balance. I, I, I wouldn't even call it a crisis. I know we have a, a pandemic going I understand that, but I believe this situation, this virus is amplifying what we've been hiding for many, 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 many years. You know, exactly. the medical industry didn't have their shit together. You know, so many people didn't have their businesses together. So many individuals didn't have their savings together. So many people didn't have their planning together. So many big companies were bullshitting us in how much money they're making 
billions of dollars. I just talked about it with one of my other friends. Nima Marcus is either filed for bankruptcy or he's going to. And I'm like, somebody should be finding out, like, what did they do in the last 10 quarters? Yes. Where did those profits go? How did that happen? And yes. why were they bullshitting us and giving us wrong numbers? So a lot of people, this is just, I think this is unveiling all of the bullshits that people yes. were running. It's yes. now on the table. Absolutely. Now we can see what's up. So I call it crisis brings out vices. I always say that. Crisis brings out vices because whatever you're not seeing in the crisis, you're going to see that. The part of you that you do not meet every time. And that's when you come up with the strategy or action plan, whether it's life or business, you need to understand your vices and you will only see them when you're in crisis. So how do you overcome that or how do you create the balance in the crisis is i like i have a long list of that but since we have the time constraint i'm just going to stick to the three three a's that i suggest and i'm sure you're going to love it <laughs> let's do it the i'm first, writing it down the first a, yes the first a is accept be a problem solver when you accept you won't resist because what you resist persists so when you are in acceptance you become a game player you become a player of the the game that I'm going to now go ahead and I'm going to be facing this because I'm accepting. That makes you, acceptance makes you a game player. The second A I suggest is adaptable. B, become a game changer. Adaptability is that will make you a game changer. Acceptance makes you a game player. Adaptability makes you a game changer. That's a decision making. So have you seen Chameleon that how it changes the color? So base, best great ability in the crisis, if you're adaptable, you're going to be the game changer. You're going to be more productive. You're going to be more assertive. You're going to make the changes and the decisions not for yourself, but for your team, for your family, for the people around. And the last A is advocate. That means become a leader. So once you understand the acceptance, once you understand the adaptability, you become to you advocate it and then you lead life, life by example. So right now in this moment where we are, I can only con like put it together as the three A's that I do in my coaching and I start my, um, I start with this. So it just takes us to that place, that three A's that I am going to follow right now and it's going to help me create some balance in the crisis situation. How am I going to do this? So I'm sure if you can apply these three A's, it will help you to create the balance in the now, cycle. One other question. That, this is awesome. So do you have a book that covers all these A's? No, I have a book. I have a coaching program which covers all the steps of the A's, all the coaching programs that I do for executives, entrepreneurs, and people who are having challenges. So working with me is not like only working with that you have to be a certain mindset. Say unique programs, I call my program Rewire Your Life and Business, that every unique individual has a unique map. You have a different processing, you have a different life path, you have different challenges. So I create, help you create that. So you apply all these A's and then we see where are you lacking. So it's like a nine step balance program that I do for people. And I also have a book on uh, searching for balance, but that's the story I'll share with you at the end that we're wrapping up because I don't want to lose my viewers. <laughs> no problem. So here, here, here's, somebody just made a comment. Why are you in Canada and not the United States? You're wasting your time. Well, call me somebody, there and I'll be there. Tell so, me to call me there and I'll join the workshops with him. <laughs> and, and, rock the, and rock America. <laughs> that's how we gotta do it i don't know why bob proctor is still over there like he should move like some of you guys need to like just anyway that's a different topic so here's my uh, my other question for you what does the word leadership mean and how do people how do we what mindset do we have to have so we're not afraid of the word leadership because a lot of people are too chicken and and they they get scared that, oh, I'm in leadership, all of a sudden things need to be changed and I need to change as a human being so I lose my authenticity. What is your recommendation there? Well, leadership is very generic. Like it's a very wide, wide um, uh, bracket that we have to look at, that people look at life leadership, business leadership, organizational leadership. Even in marriage, you have to lead. Even in parenting, you have to lead. Leadership is not one constraint word that you can limitize it. It's very vast. It's got a lot of colors. But how I look at it for me personally, right, I'm sharing my point of view, is first thing for me is self-awareness. So when you want to lead, when you want people to lead life like you, or when you want to show people what's the way, is self-awareness. And self-awareness is that key that you can't teach anyone. It's about your choice. 
self-awareness is choice. So leadership has many aspects, whether, whether we could do coaching or training programs or consultancy. There are so many aspects of leadership that I tap into. But today's uh, call, I would like to emphasize for people who really want to get and capture this, that what leadership means, to me, it's self-awareness. That when you lead with self-awareness, you're making in that moment a choice. And then that has laws which I have created this five laws of leadership with self-awareness. And I'll share with you two, and the rest we'll share if we, we, we were to connect again or do programs that I- Definitely, thank you. So these are the two laws that I would like to share today out of the five, and I think you will enjoy that. The first is the law of reflection. And the law, the second law is law of perception. Now, leadership is all about, self-awareness is all about action, and it's about growth. When you will take the self-aware actions, you're gonna to lead to growth. So the law of reflection, when you become reflective, you create the personal growth. And when you, when you apply the law of perception, you motivate others and understand other people's growth. So you help others, other people grow with your perception. When you accept other people's perception, you allow them to accept your perception. And then you build a great country, great teams, great leadership. So these are out of the five I'm sharing two with you. And as I said, if we further work together or we have other call, I can go more into the self-awareness topic. And I, I think law of action, I think law of action is like, it, it's the key because yes. you could be meditating. You could be thinking positive. Yes. You could have the best mindset. mindset I mean, you, but if you literally, I could hand you a million dollars and you will totally do nothing with it. If yes. you sit on the couch, if yes. there's no action, I mean, I don't know that many things that are happening that don't have action behind it. Exactly. So. You can think of eating food. This is a great, great metaphor. When you're hungry, you have to get up and get food, right? You can't just sit and manifest food in front of you. You have to get up to go and drink food. Like I have this glass of water I'm going to drink. I can't expect that it will come down my throat. I have to act. So for action, is self-awareness is very like great, beautiful place. And all the work, years I work with, with the business owners, high successful people, celebrities I work with, they all have this, they, there's a place you reach where you want to become self-aware. You want to tap into that energy that who am I? What am I doing here? What do I bring the best out of myself? And that's the time you're really talking about growth. That's the time you are really going within and working on yourself and your internal barriers. When you mentioned about my book earlier, and I'll share here, this is the right spot to share my story, that two years ago, I met with a very horrifying accident. It was, seriously, I'm laughing right now, but that was the real tough time of my life. When I came back from Kenya after my business trip, and I had to come back to Canada to join back my life, on the flight, because after the accident, I jumped into work. Like, you know, you have trainings, you have coaching, I'm traveling around the world. So I'm just like used to leapfrogging, like get into things and move on. I'm the action taker person. So I never realized it, that what was happening internally with me till I hit the flight and I was sobbing and I couldn't understand and why am I crying now? And that time it didn't hit me. It's all when I went within and I met with my vulnerabilities I had my challenges, which I've shared in the book, and coming back to join that and going within, besides being a coach and a leadership coach or whatever you call it, still I had challenges. I said, man, you need to grow. From here, this vulnerability, if I'm not going to address it, I'm going to be stuck here for the rest of my life. And having said that, when I saw COVID, I said, now the whole world has had a head on accident with the social trauma that now everybody don't know how to get back to their life, which I was going through two years ago. So for me, it was like, a, like really a challenge at that time that how to search balance. I was lost. I had an opportunity to go on TEDx. I was almost missing out on that opportunity. So for me, that I wrote that story in that book that what I was going through. And I think it, will, it can be very good uh, support at that time if people can get my book, Searching for Balance. It will connect them to that core of multitasking, vulnerabilities, that how we tap into vulnerabilities that sometimes we ignore it because we are designed for that. The world now has designed us for that that we don't have the time to waste. You know, we all of us, we use that. I don't have time to waste on this. I want to move on. And we don't pay attention to a lot of critical aspects of life, whether it's business or life. It all starts from you. Remember I said in the beginning, everything starts from you and starts with the int intention and then it goes into action. So that's what I realized it myself when I went through it. All that story of my entrepreneurship life, like I started my entrepreneurial life at the age of 20 with my husband. We married young, we started businesses, businesses went wrong. 
lost all the money, built the empire again, educated again. So it's kind of like a story of every entrepreneur or successful person's life. And where there was a time when there was not even two dollars to buy a burger. So it, it's it's a story which which takes you to that connection to become a great leader. That you have substance, right? That's where your life substance resides. And every unique person has a unique story. They just don't know how to reconnect with it to build. So the trauma, vulnerabilities, PTSDs, all the situations come to you. They come as a lesson. They have a lesson for you to grow from there. So as a leader, then you start growing from that place, and then you discover the great aspect of your life. And the meaning. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, I do agree. Everybody's got a story, but I think that self awareness is very important. Yes. Because a lot of people, I think we we care too much. We give a shit what other people think, because a lot of individuals could have a good story, but they're not coming out of their shell because they're thinking what other people will might think of them. And, and, and I think challenges and turbulences, I have not met a successful person who has not fell on their face multiple times. And I never met anybody who's successful who wasn't punched in the face multiple. So to me, it's like, that's part of the journey and that's what makes it unique. And that's what gives other people the inspiration not to give up on their own path own because they could see other people have gone through challenges and succumb those. As a human being, I think we have this powerful thing inside us. Everybody calls it different. But we have the power of awareness. We have the power of moving. We have the power of choice, decision. All these things that other animals on this planet don't have that. Yes. So you're not a tree. You can pick up and move. If this environment is not good, you can go somewhere else. That opportunity, I think, is going to waste because a lot of people don't realize okay, the value. Of it. And you know why they don't share their story? Because of vulnerabilities. Nine out of ten business people I've met have always had issues with vulnerabilities. And that's where I come in and I try to help and show people. Is that why vulnerability, you consider it as a weakness in business? That people say weak people are vulnerable or you will be weak if you experience vulnerability. But vulnerability is the place where I found myself, where I discovered myself. And what are we vulnerable in, in business about? Like, let's talk about business first because everybody here wants to know about mindset and we're doing the work together. So it's vulnerability in business is about failure. That you have a fear of failure, fear of losing reputation or fear of losing the courage next time and showing people that you're weak and you're not going to be able to do it. But I found myself more in the discomfort. I discovered more. But you need sometimes a guide or a coach to take you through that. You can't just get up and say, hey, I'm vulnerable. You need to choose the right person who can guide you, who can, who can draw this map. That's why I say it. I'm that map that the mountain you've never seen before, I'll guide you. So it's the internal barrier. Listen, that I, cannot, I cannot climb that mount unless I, I ask permission from my wife. So I don't know what you're talking about. You could be the best map, but I got to check permission over there somewhere else before I can take, before I can start traveling up on the mountain. Exactly. <laughs> but life or business challenges are like a mountain. So you need a person who's earned it, who can guide you, who can connect with you, who can understand your path and then lead you there. That this is where you are. So vulnerability is a very, very sensitive part when it comes to business and life. And for me, my personal experience allows me to help and show people that how to overcome vulnerability and be successful. If I'm going to think 10 years ago that if I'm a, or years ago when I discovered that I was an intuitive child and I could never fit in, I believed in myself that this intuition is a gift for me to guide people. Instead of taking away the power or showing that I know more, I'm telling people I can help you know more. There's a way of presenting yourself. Like if you're going to tell a person, I'm, I, know you, I know more than you, that person is going to be scared. But when you say, I can help you know about yourself more, that gives them encouragement, power, and empowerment and inspiration that they can move forward. So again, it comes to vulnerable. I have seen vulnerability throughout my life, fitting in the society, moving into three different continents, being born in a Muslim Pakistani country where I was born, where boundaries were just the first step of culture. 
And then moving to Africa, where I understood freedom, but then I met so many different people that I didn't know anyone to fit in that society and then make your place, again, vulnerability. And then the third coming to North America, where you said, I'm Sabaya, am I sitting in Canada? But it's blessing in disguise <laughs> to, to understand the whole um, understanding of cultural values, connection, people. That's what makes me different and unique. And you all, we all are unique and different. We don't have to be like other people. We just have to appreciate our uniqueness and our different nature. Like if I look at my problems and what I've gone through in my life, if I just stayed there, I would be laughing right now over my problems. There was a time when I cried about my problems. I tried and cried and then I rised. That's what I say, first you cry, then you try, then you rise. And that's where you move forward in life. So there's no inspiration of the inspirational, motivational story. It's your story that how you overcame. And every individual has the resilience. It's all about resilience. And resilience muscle can only be built when you want to break through your internal barriers, when you are willing to go through your vulnerabilities, when you're willing to tap into that, then you're going to achieve quite a bit. I agree with that 100%. Listen, thank you so much for taking this time and being with us. How do people find you? Well, I can be on Instagram. You can be on FB. You can watch me out on my website, NadiaMandy.com. My programs are called Rewire Your Life and Business. And I'm uh, coaching people all around the world online. I do virtual sessions. I do trainings, consultancy. Whichever way we, I connect with you, from the awesome. smallest to the bigger program. Thank you so much for taking this time and being with us this morning. Hopefully, we'll be able to do more videos because some of the topics we talk, they're big topics. I don't think a 20, 30-minute talk exactly. is going to make. It's kind of a process it, that people have to go exactly. through their, their own understanding. But you can't just say, okay, do this. I can come and sit here and talk a lot. But I believe in acting, walking the talk. Then people have to be willing to understand that this, I want to go there with this person that she's going to show me or she's going to help me understand. Remember, guys, no one can teach you till you want to learn. I agree with that 100%. Thank you so much for taking the time. Stay safe. And Thank you so start much doing for your planning on moving and, and start planning on your move to Las You know, start, tell your husband, Vahid said you need to move. I am your man. I am your man. <laughs> I have man. from Vahid now onwards that I'm coming to America to join you to help people, which I know I'm definitely going to do it. I have that belief. No, we could, we could do it from, listen, if you want to help anybody, you could do it from anywhere on the planet. Exactly. You don't have to be. But you I want to say thank you to all the viewers who joined in and who stayed in here and heard my story and connected with me. And a great, great thank you to you, Vahid, for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Anytime. Talk to you soon. Stay safe. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.